All right, here we're going to do another example of a feedback calculation. Let me draw the amplifier. All right, here's our amplifier. Now let's check the connection so we can determine the type of feedback. So from the perspective of the input, I can either go through the amplifier or through the feedback path to complete the circuit. So this is a shunt connection at the input. Looking at the output, from the perspective of the output, I need to go through both the feedback network and the amplifier. So we have a series connection at the output. So this is a shunt series amplifier. A shunt connection at the input means that I should have a current and a series connection at the output means I, have a, I should have a current. So this is a current amp. We have I out and I in. And we're going to use our hybrid parameters that are the G parameters for the current amplifier. Just a reminder, the matrix equation for our G parameters is given here. I1, V2 is equal to G11, G12, G21, G22 times V1 over I2. Now we're like before, we're going to find G12, which will be equal to beta, and then we'll find G11 and G22, which will determine the load on our network. All right, here's our network, and we know that G12 is equal to I1 over I2 when V1 is equal to zero. So here, we're going to put a current I2 into port 2. And we're going to measure the current that would flow into port 1 as a result. Now here we have a current division where we know that the current is the ratio of RE over RE plus RF. And we also know that this is flowing in the opposite direction from our calculation, so we have a minus sign. All right, next let's find G11. G11 is equal to I1 over V1 when I2 is equal to zero. So here we're going to leave port two open. We're going to place current source I1 and we're going to measure the voltage that would develop across V1. Now this is the voltage that would develop across V1 is just the current times the resistance. So we can say that G11 is equal to 1 divided by RE plus RF. Last but not least, we need to find G22. This is equal to V2 over I2 when V1 is equal to zero. So here we're going to short port one and we're going to place a current in to port two and we're going to measure the voltage that develops across that current. Of course, here we see that the resistors are just in parallel, so this would just be equal to RE in parallel with RF. All right, now let's redraw our open loop circuit. All right, here's our open loop circuit. Now we're going to break the loop and we're going to replace it with our loading. G22 
is placed at the output. This is equal to RF in parallel with RE. One divided by G11 is placed at the input. This was equal to RF plus RE. All right, now let's calculate our open loop gain. I out over I in. This is equal to our current gain, little i sub zero. Now we're going to break this up. I'm going to label this internal node Vx. So I have Vn divided by In times Vx divided by Vn times I out divided by Vx. This is v, Vn divided by In is equal to Rf parallel or Rf plus Re in parallel with R pi 1. Vx divided by Vi is equal to Ri parallel, I'm sorry, equal to minus Gm1 times R1 in parallel with R pi 2 times or plus 1 plus beta times G22. And our I out over Vx is equal to Rf parallel Re, oops, I apologize again, is equal to Gm2 divided by 1 plus Gm2 times G22. All right, so this is our total open loop current gain. Now, one thing to check here is that the total dimension of this should be dimensionless. In other words, we have a current divided by a current. So here I have in the, a resistance times a voltage gain times a conductance. So that is a dimensionless expression. That works for us. Let's now summarize. The closed loop gain, ACL, always takes the form I sub zero divided by one plus I sub zero times beta. This is, again, approximately equal to one over beta. And indeed, in this case, is equal to approximately one plus RF divided by RE. All right, now our input resistance after feedback is equal to the input resistance before feedback divided by one plus the loop gain. That would have been RF plus RE in parallel with R pi one divided by one plus little i zero times beta. Our output resistance with feedback is the output resistance before feedback times 1 plus the loop gain. And as always, our F3 dB with feedback is equal to the F3 dB before feedback times one plus the loop gain. 
Now we know for this circuit, if we want to find the F3 dB, we would simply do open circuit time constant analysis on the open loop circuit, calculate what our pole frequency is, and then replace that with F3 dB. All right, so we've now done an example of all of the various types of feedback. Remember we have shunt, shunt feedback. Shunt, shunt feedback results in a trans resistance amplifier. In other words, current input, voltage output. We have series, series feedback, which results in a transconductance amplifier. In other words, current output, voltage input. We have series shunt feedback, which results in a voltage amplifier. And we have shunt series feedback, which results in a current amplifier. All right, so we'll stop there with the examples for the day. And we'll do some more videos soon.